What is up guys, Flossy Missiles here. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a complete overhaul on my Volkswagen Westfalia's pop top. And my pop top right now is in really bad shape. As you can see, the tent is just totally smoked. There's holes everywhere on it. As you can see, all this stuff is falling off, all the rubber trim and molding and all that stuff. It's all coming off. And wait till you see my skylight. My skylight's in really bad shape. This is all tape right here that I had to just put on for temporary. Um, tape's falling off even. But check out that skylight. That thing is smoked. The sun has just done a number on it. So we're going to replace that. And uh, yeah, let me show you all the parts I have. I got some really cool stuff ready for this van. Here's the skylight, the seal for the pop top itself, the seals for the skylights and all that stuff, the luggage rack. I got lift assist from Go Westy, so it should be able to just pop right up. And now I've got a strain when I'm putting it up and all that stuff. And if I ever put something on top of it, like a bike rack or whatever, it will be really easy. That's the hardware for that. These are stainless steel cleats for the luggage rack because the stock ones are made out of steel and they rust. But I'm probably going to use these instead, which are some uh, hinges. See, they pop off like this. And you can mount that to a solar panel. So yeah, I'm also doing solar. But just for this video, I'm just going to put the solar panel on. I'm not going to talk about it my whole battery system or anything like that. All the parts to rebuild, the skylight, all brand new stuff, new Westfalia stickers, boom, boom, the glue, little uh, drain kit for the luggage rack so you don't get any leaves underneath of it and get some buildup and eventually cause rust. So that'll be good. Of course, a new tent. And I think that's everything. Da, da, da. Yeah, so it's going to be a big job. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to paint it with Interlux paint. I almost forgot to say that part. Going to paint it with Interlux paint. It's like this, you know, beige color kind of matches this, but not really. It kind of matches. But it's going to go white. I don't think I could find a color close enough. I don't want to mix anything up myself. And I've had no other brown vans that I painted with that uh, white colored paint. It actually looks really, really good. Scrub this headliner down. As you can see, little kids have written their names in it and stuff. And... Yeah, this top needs a once over bad, so we're gonna give it to it. It's gonna be awesome. First, we're gonna start out by putting the hood struts on because I have to drill holes in the fiberglass, and I'd rather drill the holes and then paint them instead of put it all together, paint it, and then drill the holes. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that first. After we do that, we will wash it super duper good, the pressure washer, and we'll bring it inside the shop, and we'll get cracking on it. After wiping it down, I went ahead and marked center, which is right there. And then I marked center on the bottom bracket. And I put the two dots for uh, where I'm going to drill the hole. So you can see that fits up nicely right there. I'm going to go ahead and center punch both the holes. And then drill a pilot hole at the smaller bit. Probably one of these little guys right here. And then it asks for a 25-64 drill bit, which who the heck has that? I'll throw all my bits, don't have one. But 3 8 is super close to it, so I'm going to use a 3 8 bit. And we're going to start drilling holes in the top. Kind of scary. Holes are drilled. And I went ahead and got a Q-tip and sprayed it with some similar colored paint just to clean up that raw metal and put some paint on it so it doesn't rust. Now we're going to install the rib nuts. Luckily, I actually have a rib nut tool. But they give you a little uh, nut and bolt to, if you don't have one of those tools, you can use that to install your rib nuts. And the 3 8 hole seems to work just fine for that rib neck. I know they recommend using a different size, but we're gonna shoot that guy in there. We're gonna put some silicone around the bottom of it to um, ensure that there's no water that ever leaks in. And here's what they look like installed. Not too bad. I went ahead and bolted on the lower bracket. It's just two 10 millimeters, which they include. Um, you're supposed to put silicone around these, but I'm just test fitting everything because all this is coming back off because obviously I'm going to redo a bunch of stuff on the top. But line it up with this one, this rail, and with a, what was it, 1564s uh, drill bit. Drilled those two holes right there and there. And yeah, you basically just line it up. It's really simple stuff. And you see the top right there? Those aren't tightened or siliconed in either. You can see, I mean, like, took this one off. It's not even bolted in. I'm not going to bolt it up right now because, like I said, it's all coming off. I'm just getting everything ready so when I go to put on the actual tent and actual everything, I'm not messing stuff up. Because you can see I leaned against this tent and it just ripped. That's how fragile this thing is. But 
Um, the new one, I'm sure, is not going to be very fragile. I'm sure it'll be pretty tough. And basically, I'm just going to replicate it, do the same thing on the other side that on this side. And we'll move on to something else. Okay, so I just finished up with the Go Westy lift assist. And I took it all back off so I can go ahead and take off the top. But before I take it off, I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash the whole entire top. And I think I'm going to take off all this molding because uh, I'm sure it has dirt trapped underneath it. So let's go ahead and rip all this rubber off right now. It's packed full of dirt. This is trashed. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing Go Westy does to remove their tent and top. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the bottom of the tent with a razor blade. And then there's going to be two tins on uh, the front on both sides, so four total in the front. I'm going to go ahead and loosen those not, and then don't take them off all the way. Then take off two of the rear bolts and leave one of them on. And then uh, when I'm ready for the whole thing to come off, I'll zip tie those front ones together and remove them. Remove them and go grab some help so someone can help me take this thing off. So those three tens are right under here in the rear. And then the ones up front are right here. I already took these two off. And there's two up here. Um, went ahead and zip tied these together because these are spring loaded, these bars right here. I just put this two by four in as a prop to get to the rear bolts. Oh my gosh, lifting the top without the support is so stinking heavy. This thing weighs so much. I honestly forgot because I haven't done one of these in a few years. And lifting that top without the helper, I mean, geez. It's hard. Oh, now you can see the bolt in the rear where we're moving. Uh, it's just this one right here. There's two right here as well, but I already removed those. So it's just this one, and then the top will be completely loose from the van. All right, me and Rob are going to go ahead and try to remove the top, just me and him. We'll see if we can do it or not. It's actually pretty difficult. Um, yeah, it's pretty heavy for two people to do. Any tips, Wasn't that Robbie? heavy, really. It was just awkward. I can't get my fingers under there. Bobby couldn't get his fingers under there. But it's off now. It's sitting over there. I'm going to put some soap in it. I'm going to pressure wash it and let it all drain out. There's just four big old nasty screws like this holding on the luggage rack. And that one's pretty manageable, but I'm going to go ahead and take those off while my uncle's still down here helping me. By the way, when I go camping, I guess I have this big old van. I just take a tent and... Uh, you know, stick it in my Miata, and there you go. You just go camping that way. There's four right here in the back, too. I totally forgot to mention these. And if you buy a whole bunch of Dogecoin, in about six months, you'll be able to hire somebody to do this for you. <laughs> no, what you do is you pack your ice chest when you go camping, like if you do it my way, and you pack a frozen steak. You don't have that on the first night, because that's almost like keeping your ice chest cool. And then you have it on the second night when it starts to thaw, And then you hard boil some eggs. So when you're out hiking or whatever, you could just, boom, there you go. You're eating in two seconds. Uh, bring some bagels, because they don't smash. If you bring bread, it smashes. Bagels, they don't. Throw your hard boiled egg on there. It's really dry, but it's, it's food. It'll get you going. And those are my life hacks for camping. This thing is glued on, man. And that's only a couple I gave you. I, I got a lot more. Hey, it's heavy. Oh. oh my gosh, my fingers. The top is covered in dirt and bugs and leaves. Is that like mud? Basically, yeah. It's probably dust that turned, got wet and then turned into mud. Something. It's dirty up here, so I'm going to have to clean this out. With a little Dawn soap and the pressure washer, dude, this thing looks awesome. That's the best way I've ever cleaned one of these is with a pressure washer. My first time ever cleaning with a pressure washer. And you know, you think it might be too rough on it, but it's actually not. It didn't hurt it at all. And it got all the old headliner mess out of there and it looks super nice now. So stoked on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and lean it up to let all this water right there drain out of it. And yeah, we'll be ready to start getting ready to prep it for paint. I noticed along the side someone has put a lot of sealant throughout the years and so uh, 
I'm about to get the, all that off with a razor blade. It's like you try to play the game when you're mad at it. The top is fully prepped and ready to be painted. This is the paint I'm going to be painting it with. It's Interlux off white it's a four three eight one if you guys want to buy the same exact stuff i luckily already had a can of it here i thought i was gonna to have to go to west spring and get another can but i guess from another job i had i still had a can left over and that stuff's expensive it's like forty dollars a can so stoked on that uh here's what the top is looking like right now got the skylight out got the bolts for the little lifter thing out uh, it's looking really good i had to go around the whole edge of it with a razor blade. It went through like six or seven, no, probably like ten razor blades getting all the silicone off because someone had silicone that seal on it like a million times over. And so, yeah, there's tons of silicone all over the ground. It's kind of a mess just getting it all prepped out. It's actually almost midnight now. I've been working on this thing all day. But it came out, I mean, <laughs> it looks really good for being prepped right now, in my opinion. So it's going to look good painted, I believe. Uh, I'm just gonna use a roller. I don't know if I told you guys that or you saw it up there, but I'm just gonna use a roller and roll it on. That's what I've always done. Here is the luggage rack. Looks pretty good as well. Being prepped out and ready to go. Um, for the Westfalia sticker, I removed that with a razor blade and I uh, took measurements of everything and pictures and stuff so I could put the next one, next sticker, right back where that one was, uh, was at. So yeah, let's get painting. And here is the final product. I forgot how nice that Interlux lays out. Turned out pretty stinking good. A lot of this just has to do with prep work. If you prep it good, it should come out pretty good. It's been, uh, I tried to do two coats. So I did one last night around midnight and then I woke up this morning and did one around 7 a.m. And what time is it now? It's probably like two o'clock right now. And it's still not dry. It's like pretty dry. Like obviously I could put my hand on it, straight to the touch, all that stuff. But I know it like has a kind of attackiness to it. So, yeah, I'm kind of just waiting on that to put my skylight in. Kind of sucks just looking, sitting here looking at it. In the meanwhile, we're doing Adam's top as well. He's just replacing his tent on his. And for the tent, what we did is we marked the center, which we just followed the Go Westies instructional video. We marked the center, we drilled the hole through it, and then from there we worked our way out. And it's been screwing up pretty easily. Nothing too crazy. Also, a good thing to note is if you haven't watched the Go Westie video, there's different style tents that require different uh, things like um, off brand or different brand acrylic and cotton ones they say that the beading goes on the outside this is a go westy tent and the, the beading actually goes on the inside so right underneath this piece of aluminum me and adam just screwed in that rear section we found center again and then worked our way out this was actually way, way more difficult than the front because obviously it's all tight at this point we followed the go westy video like i said again and we tucked the corners in first and did it that way we had to use those plastic pry tools just to make it work but it's in nice now and all we gotta do is the sides and then I'll be ready to go back onto the van.
I'm about to put the decal on the luggage rack, and this originally when I got it didn't have a sticker on it, and so I don't really have a reference point, so I just looked at some pictures online, and uh, this is the best I came up with in between these blue tape, the blue tape, and that's where it's gonna go. And you can see I have a flashlight behind this shining through this hole right here because all of them online have it between the E and the S right there. And so that's a good marker for me. I can see through it that way. And uh, hopefully get this thing all lined up the way it's supposed to be. It's like 98 degrees outside, so the top is on. And they'll go, that goes on super easy. You just need a couple people. Put the two bolts there and there. And then there's three on each side right here. These are 10 mils and those are 10 mils up there. Now I'm working on getting the solar panel on. There's the solar panel, uh, 100 watt energy. And I'm using God of Splits tutorial with these stainless steel hinges I got off Amazon. So they shouldn't rust. And then so what I was originally gonna put on there is these stainless steel cleats, but I'm just gonna steal the hardware from them now. And I'll actually I'll use some of the cleats there, 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 but on the four main spots where the solar panel is going to bolt onto, that's what I'm doing. I marked the hole where I need to drill with the sharpie this way. I know it's all flat and straight so when I go ahead and have the solar panel sitting up there I'm not trying to have one of the hinges crooked or whatever. But yeah that's a little trick I used. And here it is all complete. It's been a few months since I uh, finished this thing up and I'm just gonna film the last clip right now so I can give a kind of a good review on it. These struts thing right here from uh, Go Westy were totally worth it. You just barely push that button on the inside of the release and this thing comes flying up. Uh, top's a little dirty because I live in the Norco Riverside area so we got a lot of dust. We're in a horse crawl right now actually. And so, yeah, hard to keep things clean around here. Um, I don't think I ever filmed this, but for the bottom part to get screwed in is just these metal strips going all the way around the whole thing, and you just run some screws in. You want to lower the top about halfway down, just pull that bar down, and then put like a piece of wood while you screw all those in. Take these cushions out. Uh, I think the biggest hack about this whole entire video, biggest life hack, was pressure washing this uh, headliner because it turned out awesome. Uh, I ran the wires for my solar panel right underneath the metal stripping like uh, got a split did. I probably should put some silicone in there to keep the moisture out or whatever kind of thing out. But it's pretty sealed anyways, especially when I lower it. Little P-clamp right here. And it turned out awesome. The top looks great and works great. Uh, to do a top like this is going to take you about a weekend to do. And probably run you about $1,000 when it comes to an acrylic tent. They're around $400. Uh, you can do a cotton one for about half that. Skylight a couple hundred bucks, seals a couple hundred bucks, paint a couple hundred bucks. Ends up being a thousand dollar job. But in my opinion, well worth it. Van looks great, stoked on it. If you like today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more car content. Thank you so much for watching.